Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at network trends. We'll be discussing recent trends, bring your own devices, online collaboration, video communications, cloud computing, technology trends in the home, power line networking, wireless broadband, wireless internet service providers, and finally, wireless broadband service. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks. I'm Kevin, here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. There's always going to be new trends, new technologies coming out, new ways of doing stuff, the ability to access that data, get it to the right people. You're going to have to be, as a network administrator, you're going to have to stay up on that. Now, this, this role of the network, it's going to change. New devices, like I said, new technologies, new way of doing stuff. Now, there's several trends that we're going to talk about here going through there. First one here is this idea of bring your own device or called BYOD. It's that employees nowadays expect to be able to bring their own device, a cell phone, a laptop, a tablet, connect into your network at work and be able to browse the internet. Are they going to be able to do work on their device? Maybe yes, maybe no, but it's still, they're going to expect to have internet access. And most companies do do that. What we see here is the network administrator has to plan for that. They have to give them the ability to bring their own device in, make the connection. But you also have to plan, how do I secure that and make sure they do no damage? Now, it could be somebody with evil intentions that, do, that does want to access to your network and attack your network and something like that. Or it could be somebody with good intentions. Lifelong employee, a great worker, they bring their device in and it's been infected, infected with a virus. That virus is going to then attach to your network, infect other computers, send compromised data out. But you need as an administrator to plan for that. So you have to pay attention to this bring your own device. And as we work through this series, we'll talk, talk more about these trends and breaking in. Another trend is online collaboration. Online collaboration is huge in today's world. The ability to meet with somebody, to work with them, share documents, in real time, share conversations, voice, video, having that all together. This also ties into the next one, video communications. People love to see a face. They love to see the interaction, deal with it. That's why you get to see me on this screen. I think it comes across much better this way. Looking at that, powerful tool. Um, I do have to say this, Cisco does push its telepresence. It's their uh, collaboration tool. It's a very good tool. It's also pretty expensive. There's other solutions out there. Zoom is a free video conferencing tool. I know lots of families use it to meet and talk with relatives over distances. MS Teams, a lot of, a lot of companies who have investment in Microsoft products, Outlook Exchange servers, SharePoint servers, they add in Microsoft Teams that allows the voice, video, real-time sharing of data to happen. Discord, if you're a computer or gamer nerd, Discord is huge in our world too. So there's other solutions out there. If you like this episode on network trends and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to be alerted every time I release a new episode. You can visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details on how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Cloud computing is a trend. The idea of having to connect to the internet to connect to a server to get to your data. We see that happening on a personal level, we see it happening in corporate levels. Personal level, we see that your phone can connect into the cloud, and then the cloud then controls the Wi-Fi switches in your house. Corporations, they're putting all their servers into the cloud. 
They're allowing, they're allowing somebody else to host those servers to handle all the hardware, cooling concerns, that type of stuff. So we're seeing all of this starting to be pushed outside of our company walls, our home walls, these services out there. Typically, there's four types of cloud computing that we see, public, private, hybrid, and custom cloud. Public is anybody can have access to it. This is uh, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure. There's uh, several other of them out there where you can connect into them, you can get into it. I'm willing to bet that a lot of you are using cloud services, you just don't know it. These companies, Microsoft, uh, Amazon, they, they've set these services up in such a way that you don't even know they're using it. And from the administration side, it simplifies a lot of stuff down to do that. Private cloud is you are setting up your own cloud. You're setting up your servers, the ability to connect in over the internet, get to your data. Then we have a hybrid cloud, which is a combination of that. You set up some of your own servers, some of your own hardware. You use some public services, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure. We, and you combine them. And that's what I see a lot of companies that are using as a hybrid. We don't want to give all of our data out there. So we want to ha have some of our own stuff on our own hardware. But for the most part, we're going to let, use the public servers out there. And then custom clouds, you can design this stuff to meet your needs, to meet your IT needs that your company needs. You can design this how you need. There's trends in the home. Like I mentioned earlier, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa. These are all trends out there. A lot of us are starting to get Office 365 accounts, Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets, Google Slides. We see that into the, that the services are hosted by somebody else out on the internet and we can use them in our homes. Now, if we don't have an internet connection, we can't connect to those services. We can sometimes have an offline version, but we need to connect to the internet. And so we see that type of stuff. Another interesting thing is power line networking. I don't know if this is actually going to take off or not, but it's using the power line you have existing in your wall that where you plug in your computer or your lights into the wall. You can plug this little adapter in on one point and you can plug another point in. You connect up your router to one end, you connect up your PC to the other end, and then it sends the network signal across your power lines. It's kind of interesting to see how it does that. I, I don't know of many companies that are using it. Some people I know are using it in homes that don't want to run additional wires where wireless doesn't work for one reason or another. I see this being used in historical buildings quite a lot because in historical buildings, you can't modify anything. It means you can't drill holes, you can't run new wires, but they have existing power lines. And so you can plug this in and you can get your network to go over, go over and cross walls where you could normally not get to. Wireless broadband. I see this a lot. Uh, cities are getting it. Rural country areas are starting to get this. This is special technologies. This is not cellular technologies. This is not satellite technology, but special wireless technologies set up to give you broadband speeds. And some of these speeds are getting up to about 100 gig per second. Now, they're not widely available in all areas. You need um, to be in the right area to take advantage of this. But I see this happening quite a bit. Advantage here of this, this wireless broadband, instead of like cable or DSL where they have to run wires to your house, they just have to set up one tower anywhere within a half mile to up to three or four miles, I've heard, that you can get broadband speeds to your house so that they don't have to build that infrastructure out. They don't have that huge cost. So I see some companies starting to push this more and more. It was my pleasure to bring you this wonderful episode on network trends. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I linked just for you. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on Introduction to Networks. Once again, I'm Kevin. This here is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.